Hi, my name is Travis McHenry. I'm the creator of the True Oracle of Nostradamus. And uh, today I'm going to be walking you through how to do a reading with this deck. Um, the deck is originally based on a 1911 French deck called the Tarot de la Reine, which means the Tarot of the Queen. <clears throat> It only had one printing in, uh, in 1911. It was a very unpopular deck for a lot of reasons. There were a lot of faults. So I went ahead and took the deck um, and just improved it as good as I could. Uh, redid all the coloring for all of the cards. And so this is all, you know, these are all my original colorings and uh, translated all the text into, from French into English. I updated some of the meanings because in some cases they didn't really fit the way I felt like they were supposed to. And um, so yeah, so it's a much better deck now. I'm pretty excited uh, to share it with the world. And I feel like doing this reading is, is the best way to do it. So I've already shuffled the cards, I've laid them out. You can see in a traditional Celtic cross spread. Um, the, the good thing about this deck is it's very, very versatile. So if you wanted to use it as just a standard Oracle deck, the meanings in any, as in any traditional Oracle deck, the meanings are printed right on the card. So you, you've got those right there if you want them, or uh, you can also use it as a tarot deck in a way, uh, because most of the major arcana, you can see you've got the emperor here. Um, the major arcana is just like the major arcana of the tarot. And the minor arcana is actually just like the minor arcana of the tarot as well, as you'll see as we sort of go through this. Okay, so when you're uh, going to do a reading like this, it's helpful to use a significator card, uh, just like the traditional tarot. And if you're a male, you're generally encouraged to use the, the prophet card. And if you're a female, you would sort of use, or reading for, for a female, you might use the high priestess. But honestly, you could use any card in the deck that you want to. Um, those are just the, suggested by the original author of this deck back in 1911. So the prophet replaces the magician in this deck. And I really like the, the symbolism here of, you know, a... A magician who is able to, through ritual and magic, uh, summon something out of the uh, out of nothing. Really, in this case, it's coming out of the earth, and it is what we would call the, or what Aleister Crowley would call the Scarlet Woman. Okay, so I've got that one down as my significator card, and then the rest of the reading was already. I've already laid out all the cards, so I'm not going to, you know, really go into depth in depth in the meaning of every single card in this in that's been laid out here but i want i'm gonna touch on all of them and then we'll sort of focus on the future cards as as what we care about the most all right so the card that's covering me is the malady oh by the way the reading i did was just to say what's going to happen over this next month um i have a lot of stuff going on over the next month I'm, I'm going to brazil i have the the kickstarter for this deck going right now so i have quite a few things happening and just to sort of get an idea of what what my month is going to hold okay so the first thing is the malady healing and illness um healing is is facing upright so we'll focus on that meaning i'll try to hold up every card here as i <laughs> Okay, so what does the malady mean in my present circumstances and over the next month? Well, you know, for those of you who probably don't know, um, over the past year, you know, because of COVID and everything, I had gained a lot of weight from 2020 to 2022. And I've been focusing over the last year on losing a lot of that weight. I was actually at a point where my BMI was 30. I was clinically obese and my doctor and my personal trainer both said, if you don't lose this weight, you are like going to die an early death because it's all belly fat. So anyways, healing is what I've been focusing on through working out constantly, eating a really good diet. And I am already down 32 pounds, I think, or 33 pounds from where I was a year ago. So uh, I have another 10 pounds or so to go before I'm at what I would say is really a, a healthy body weight where I want to be. So over the next month, yeah, I would expect to hit that goal because I've been doing really good. So healing makes sense as something that is sort of covering me for everything else. What is crossing me is the strength card. 
Now, if you look at this version of the strength card, it's I think it's pretty interesting way to do it because generally it is a an image of a woman uh, forcing open or forcing close the mouth of a lion. And in this case, it is the victorious knight stepping over the, um, or standing over the, the defeated knight. And then you've got the queen over here. She's really the controller of, of the knights, you know? So you still have that kind of feminine element there, but it's really, in this case, masculine power. Now, if you turn this card upside down, that's kind of the cool thing about this particular deck is because the, the reversed meanings are all printed on it. You know, now you're you're the guy instead of being the victor here, you're now the person who is being um, trampled. So submission is the reversed meaning, and dominance is the is the upright meaning. So I've got strength crossing me, and you know I've always been taught, and the way I've always sort of handled crossed cards is that if it's a good card, as strength is generally a good card that's crossing you, it means your challenges are not gonna be that bad. It's not gonna be that difficult. So basically, I have the strength to handle anything that is gonna come up. And also, the strength connects to this, this um, malady card, where I was saying the healing, I'm focusing on, on my body and, and working out and getting healthy. You know, I go to the gym literally seven days a week. Strength training is a huge part of what I do. And uh, it shows, you should see my shoulders when I got my shirt off, they're incredible. Um, so, so I think that that really rings true for me. Okay, so if we look at the two past cards, you've got, uh, these are influences that are falling away, coming, coming, out of, um, uh, coming out of their influences. So the first one we'll look at is uh, the Emperor. Now, this card is, is turned upside down, Anarchy and Disorder. Generally, when you see anarchy and disorder in your reading, that's probably bad. But in this position, the falling away, it's good. I just moved across the country. I just went through a, a long divorce, or a short divorce, I should say. And anarchy and disorder is something that's been a big part of my life for the last, like, three or four months. And so the fact that that influence is going to be falling away is really good. If this card were faced upright and it was authority and stability is falling away, I would be a little bit more nervous. But the fact that the Emperor card is turned upside down is, is good for me. And I'll get that close. Again, you can sort of see what the artist Henry Steimer has done here. You've got the authority and stability of the Emperor as this, you know, usually the Emperor is a, an old man sitting on a stone throne. Well, in this case, it's just a, a stone or a concrete monument of the Emperor. And then, but look down here. Waiting in the reverse position, the anarchy and disorder, are these wild dogs that are ready to snap up the emperor's power the second he falls off that pedestal. So it's a really, really interesting way to, to depict that card. Okay, and the other one in the past is the monk. Now, this is not necessarily an influence that's falling away, but it's actually the, the way, the position that it's in means this is what I'm going to use to build on the future. This will be the skill or the talent or whatever, the experience that I have that will help the predictions made in this reading come to pass. And it's fascinating that, first of all, it's the monk card. You'll see why in a second here. But second, that the, the monk card stands for ritual. And by the way, this is the image when I saw this, this, uh, original black and white drawing in the in the book that came with this in 1911 I was like dude I gotta recolor that and make this a deck because it, it's just so ominous but the meaning is actually really nice it's ritual and of course the reverse meaning is hypocrisy but we don't have to worry about that so the fact that I am a ritual magician I you know been uh, practicing rituals really on a regular basis for the past probably five years I guess now six years actually yeah 2017 um so ritual is what i'm going to use to build on the rest of the deck that will be my talent so it's interesting if you look at these two cards they are faith and the pope these are in the two cards in the future position so i'll pick these up so you can get a better look at them faith and the pope so if you put the monk right next to these i mean these are very similar. These are like three sides of the same coin, okay? They're all very similar. The imagery is similar, the meanings are, are similar, 
And in general, these are all a religious person or a spiritual person, if you will. So in my future positions, faith and the Pope, we're going to come back to those cards. I want to go to the other things first here, and then we'll, we'll come back and do the detailed meanings of those, of those cards. So then you've got the, the line over here. I like to call these the, like the checksum, if you will, of the reading. You can sort of go through and say, well, do these three cards reflect what I'm actually feeling or what my present circumstances are? So this one is what I'm bringing to the reading, my current surroundings. Um, it's the happiness card. So some of this deck, a lot of it actually, is based on the life of Queen Catherine de' Medici, who was the Queen of France. And she had a really interesting life and she was involved in the occult. And she hired Nostradamus to be her kind of personal astrologer. So um, in this case, you've got Catherine de' Medici with one of her many suitors or possibly her husband, but you've got the, the broken flowers on the ground. So maybe it, this isn't someone she ended up being with, but spiritual happiness is in the upright position and material happiness is down here with the earthly part in the reversed position. But anyways, the card means happiness. Look, right now I'm in a position where I'm reasonably happy. Like I said, the anarchy and disorder of the last few months have kind of passed away. So, um, and I have a semi-romantic interest in my life. Um, nothing serious yet, but we'll see in the future. So this is what I was bringing to the reading. This energy is, is correct. Next, this is a really cool card. It's one of my favorites in the deck. Um, it's called the name may change. This is what they originally originally called it, education. I'm not sure that's the right name for this card. Um, remember, just because the French translation means education doesn't mean that's really what they intended to say. Um, so delicacy and cruelty are the upright and reversed meanings. But what this is depicting is Catherine de Medici, Catherine de Medici as a young girl and you can see she's already practicing like witchcraft. She's got the birds under, these are like black crows under her command. And she's got the hooves of the devil there, um, trampling the beautiful flowers. <laughs> so you can tell the people who made this deck did not think really very highly of her, but I, I view this as a positive thing. Like I don't see this card and think she's the devil. I see this card and think she's basically a sorceress or a, a witch in a positive sense. So, um, this is my home life or the, the family life, my friends, that kind of a thing. This could mean more than that, though. This could, in this particular scenario, bounce off this ritual card that we saw earlier, where ritual is my skill set. And here you have basically a sorceress um, who is, would be one of my friends. Sorceress, sorcerer who I'm friends with or know, who is going to you know, be around and, and be a part of this journey that I'm on this month or, or whatever the rest of the year. So kind of an interesting card and a good good place to, to have it in my reading. Now, the next one is the Executioner. So this looks like kind of a scary card. It's actually a really positive card. When you think of an Executioner, you generally think of them cutting your head off, but that's not what this card is. You're not the victim. You are the executioner in this case. So imagine using that axe to cut loose of the influences that are harmful or that are in general not productive to you. So the executioner in a reading is really good. Now it says up here atonement from crimes or pardon from crimes. So I look at this as either your your own spiritual you know releasing something that has happened to you or you know letting go of of guilt that you feel and then the upside would be pardon from crimes which would be the opposite of that would be somebody else letting go of something you've done to them or you know someone else saying hey you're 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 cool i don't hate you anymore and this for my case is in the reversed position and this is the what I always call the fear card. This is like my greatest fear, what I'm afraid of, um, what could go wrong, what's on the horizon that I'm, that I'm worried about. It doesn't mean that this is what's going to happen, it just means this is what I'm afraid of happening. So I'll be honest, I don't really, if this were upright, it would make a little bit more sense. You know, I'm afraid that I'm not cutting loose the things that are 
that are harmful to me in my life. But um, I guess I, I could be concerned that other people, I don't really care what other people think about me. Uh, if I've hurt anybody, I would want them to, to pardon me, of course. But um, I, I'm not 100% sure that this card rings true for me. But, you know, you got to meditate on these and, and who knows, maybe it does. Okay, so let's look at the big ones here, the future cards, the three future cards. So I already talked about um, faith a little bit. I'll show it to you again. The top is prayers. Now, this particular position is going to be the sort of general energy of the outcome. And the idea that faith will have something to do with it, it doesn't necessarily mean a Christian faith or a Catholic faith or anything like that. It just means, in a way, spirituality, okay? And everything that I've been working on, not just surrounding this deck, yeah, the prophecies in the deck are very spiritual. I've had to go and, you know, research a lot of stuff in the, in the Bible to see, hey, what exactly does this mean? How, how does this apply? Nostradamus's prophecies were, were ancient. They looked biblical. They sort of felt biblical, even if they necessarily weren't. Um, so this is a place where I've been heavily in the last few months, and I anticipate being there heavily in the next few months as well. The same thing with the Pope. You know, I would almost say that if you put these two cards together in future positions, they would point to, um, you know, me becoming a, a teacher, a spiritual teacher in some way. Uh, and, and that's something that I've been encouraged to do. I, I wanted to try and start a TikTok or something and and do, um, you know, tarot readings and, and spirituality courses and stuff like that. So these are something I was already thinking about getting involved in. And here they are in my in my future positions. So it's encouraging me, hey, Travis, you gotta, I don't even have a TikTok. Um, you gotta start those, start that up and, and make it work. And I wanna read uh, from the, so look here. This deck comes with a really robust um, guidebook. It's, it's big, it's got pictures of every card and you know explanations and what i did that the old, that the original authors of this deck did not do i tied a prophecy one of nostradamus's prophecies to every single card so like for example let me if we go with faith the prophecy associated with this card is in nature they will be equal but very different in faith the prophecy for the Pope is elected as a Pope and mocked. He suddenly undergoes timid emotions by sweetness provoked to die, but fear is extinguished on the night of his death. Okay, so the idea is you don't just instantaneously know what those prophecies mean. You have to kind of meditate on them a little bit, let a little time go by, and then they'll hopefully click and make sense. All right, so last card, the penultimate card, I think is what they would call it. Card number 10 is the star. So the star is one of the coolest cards in this deck because it is uh, a reversed or an upright card. It can go either way. And if it's upright, it means the beginning or the day. If it is upside down, reversed, it means the ending or the night. So... This card has combined the imagery from the star card and the moon card onto one card. Or sorry, the sun card and the moon card onto one card. Because if you think about what a star is, a star really is a sun that shines in the night. So it makes sense to put both of those on one card. And by the way, there is in this deck a moon card and a sun card that are I mean, the moon card is like one of the coolest cards that I think I've ever seen. Let me find it for you real quick. So this is what the moon looks like in this deck. It's pretty cool, right? Look at that guy. What's he up to? <laughs> and even the you know moon is, is all about hidden things, things not really revealed. Um, and you've even got the bat flying in front of the moon. So even the moon itself, that light is somewhat concealed, which I think is pretty cool. All right. So back to this one. So we have the star card. In my case, it was upside down. So it means the ending or the night. Um, I don't exactly know how to interpret that. I mean, in a way, endings are a little bit scary, but you know, it could mean, this is just an idea, it could mean that the Kickstarter I'm, I launched uh, 
just a, a few days ago, will be my last, it will be the ending, it will be my last Kickstarter, and in the future I will be moving into more of a teaching, uh, holding seminars, holding courses, teaching courses, that kind of a thing, um, instead of releasing Kickstarters and, and creating tarot decks. Who knows? Um, that's kind of the way that I'm interpreting it. I don't know if that's 100% correct. And let me read the, the meaning of the star as I show it to you here. Or sorry, the prophecy of the star from Nostradamus. The great star will burn for seven days. The cloud will cause two suns to appear. And I mean, to me, that really resonates with this specific card because you've got two suns, literally. And even here, look at the night, you've got two wolves, which could also be two suns. We don't know if they're boys or not, but um, it, it really resonates with the card. It's, it's just so cool how the prophecies are easy to integrate into this deck. And by the way, the prophecies that I've done are all new translations. So I used a, um, the, I think it was 1568 French edition of Nostradamus's prophecies. And there's, I think almost a thousand prophecies in there. So those are the ones I'm still working on the final translations for some of them, but, um, yeah, you'll get to get to read all those if you want to. And I just wanted to show you real quick what the back of this looks like. This is a vintage pattern that I, I took and made it better than it originally was. This is not the original pattern of the, of the 1911 deck, but yeah, I think it's pretty cool. looks nice. Here's the deck box. By the way, this will not come in a normal tuck box because we just hit the $20,000 stretch goal. So this was just sort of a sample box I had made anyways, but uh, it will be updated to be to be a really cool rigid box. And you can see I've even added like a prophecy on there, which is kind of neat. Letters of the Great Prophet will be seized. They will fall into the hands of the tyrant. Nostradamus, 1555. All right, so that's it. The, the true oracle of Nostradamus, it's on Kickstarter at the moment as I am um, doing this, this video right now. And uh, I, I guess I can go through a couple of the other cards here. And it's going to be ending in, I think, 24 days. So you still have some time left if you're interested in backing this project. Or if the project has already been released, you can probably buy these cards on my website. Um, and, yeah. and, and this one, just to demonstrate how similar the Minor Arcana is in this deck to the regular Tarot Minor Arcana, Idyllic Lovers. Okay, so look at these two. It's card number one. And this card, this Minor Arcana starts at the Two of Cups and works its way through Cups. And then it goes on to, I think, Wands and then Swords and then Pentacles. I think that's the correct order. So like cards one through nine will all be analogs to the Cup Suits. Cards 10 through 19 will be, or sorry, 18 will be analogs to the Wand Suits, so on and so forth. And then this is a Major Arcana card. You can distinguish the Major Arcana from the Minor Arcana based on the um, Major Arcana all has uh, Roman numerals and Minor Arcana all has Arabic numerals. So that's it. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, let me know. I'm going to try and do some readings with this deck in the future on um, Instagram or, or I guess my TikTok account if I can ever set one up. And uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.